Number two, part eight from the 2007 Advanced Tire. Just two quick differentiations. Find the derivatives for three marks each. First one is functions of functions. Chain rule, if you will. What you have here is actually three layers of functions. When they say the chain rule, it's probably more appropriate to call it the onion rule because there are functions within functions here. What you have is, if I just put it down here, you're starting off with a little linear expression there. There's a linear function, 2x. Acting on that, there's the sine. So you have the sine acting on that part. That would be the next layer of it. And finally, you have e to the whole thing. Those are the three layers that you have to differentiate through. e is a function of this thing. Sine is a function of that thing. And when you differentiate it, it's just you differentiate e with respect to that. Then you differentiate sine with respect to that. And finally, you differentiate this little expression. I think what first thing I'll do here is I'll just rewrite that because that's just a sort of typographical, typographical convenience to write this. Of course, you can just take that straight out. So I'll write e to the sine. And I think I'll emphasize the fact that that's also a function of a function by putting sine of 2x with the 2x in the bracket. So what's the derivative? Well, that'll be you start with the outer one. The derivative of e with respect to something will just be e to that something. So that'll just be e to the thing itself, e to the sine of 2x. Now multiply that by the derivative of the function it's acting on, which is a sine. The derivative of the sine of something is the cosine of that thing. So multiplied by the cosine of that thing, which was a 2x. I have to break through the first skin of that onion here. Then the next part would be, what was that variable it was acting on? What was that something? It was another function. It was a 2x. So multiplied by the derivative of that 2x, which was 2. And that's the only reason for calling it a chain rule, because it looks like links in a chain. It has to be more appropriate, and apart from calling it the onion rule, which is the way you perceive it, to think of it as the cog rule, because it would be like this variable 2x is a cog that changes in value. Sine is another cog onto it. And as that changes, this changes at some other rate. And then E is another cog after that, that depending on the rate this is changing at, affects that rate. So you've got these related rates. So cog rule, chain rule, onions, functions and functions of functions. Tidy this up, what have we got? It's not good leaving that two next to this because that could end up looking like the cos is acting on two. So I'll take that to the front. So what have we got? We've got two, whichever you like it. I think I'll write two e to the sine two x cos two x. That would do. And for part B, what have we got? There's an exponential function. But unfortunately, the only exponential function you know is this one. It's e to the power of some variable, in which case the derivative is still e to that variable. So what I'll have to do here is diffuse this little 4 by removing the exponential nature of it. And the way you can do that is by taking logs of both sides. So if you take the logarithm of one side, and it has to be natural logarithms, of course. Again, that's the only one you know how to differentiate straight off. And then take the natural logarithm of this, this side. That has the very handy effect of popping that power out. So I've got log n y will be x squared plus 1 times log n 4. And of course, log n 4 is just a constant, so that's just going to be a coefficient of this term. And then differentiate that. Well, log n y, which is a function of a function, the logarithm, the derivative of logarithm, is 1 over the variable it's acting on, which in this case is a y. And if that y isn't the x you're interested in, then differentiate that with respect to it. And it was x I wanted. On this side, I've got log n4 times this. So that'll just be log n4 times x squared multiplied by the power. So that'll be 2 log n4x. And of course, 1 times log n4 is a constant, so that'll just disappear. Here I should emphasise, of course, that that's not the logarithm of 4x. That is just a constant multiplying x. 2 times this constant x. And then finally bring that y over. So what have I got? dy by dx would be 2 log n 4x multiplied by y. 2 log n 4, you could pop that in as log n 16 if you like. 
by the square on the 4, x times, instead of just writing y, I'll write what y was equal to, times 4, x squared plus 1. And there's not a lot I could do to tidy that up, really, apart from maybe emphasising again the fact that that's just a constant. It is.